Welcome to my office. Today I came up to open up my drawer and to get out my Wild Brothers neckband. It's been about two years since I last had this on. I think it was probably four, four or five months after getting back to the States that I took this guy off. And I hadn't taken it off since I put it on when I was, I think I was 13 when I actually made this and put this on. So I had worn it for years over in the jungle because over in that context and that culture, back in the tribe, everyone wore necklaces. Boys and girls always had lots of necklaces. In fact, no one ever didn't have a necklace on. If you didn't have a necklace on, your neck was considered very long, abnormally long and very unattractive. So my brothers and I always grew up with many necklaces. And we wore um, traditional necklaces that are beads, beaded like this. But as we got older, we wanted to branch off and to create our own necklace, or what we call a neck band. For boys and girls, it's not a necklace, it's a neck band. So I wore this thing ever since I made it, all the way up until just two years ago. After we had transitioned here to the States, um, you know, it's one thing to wear a necklace in the jungle, but when I was back here in America, I looked around and saw there's not a whole lot of other guys wearing necklaces. One by one, my brothers and I, we took off our neck bands and um, just put them in the drawers. But, you know, it's time to get this back out. It, it reminds me of my home back in the jungle and of all the fun adventures that we went on. And it's time to don these neck, neck bands again and go on some fun new adventures here, here in America. I'm just working on some Wild Brothers neck bands right now. This one's coming along really nice. It's actually surprisingly fun uh, making these. It's kind of rewarding when they when they turn out so beautiful by the end. Yeah, my brothers and I, we figured that if we enjoyed them so much, um, people here in the States would probably enjoy them too. So what we've been working on recently is trying to make them um, available for you guys. And so we have them on our website now. And um, the thing that's really neat about these pieces of wood in particular is they're actually from Wano land. They're from the tribe that we grew up in. And they, they finally made it all the way from the other um, side of the world to the States. And so we've been working on them. Um, and there's been a lot of interest so far, but the problem is we um, have a limited number of stock. It's kind of hard to get, you know, wood when it's all the way over in Indonesia. So our, our mission for today is to try to find some more wood around town somewhere that could be future Wild Brothers net bands, because we're running out. Yeah, we're, we're on the lookout right now for any kind of straps that would be on the side of the road, you know, that somebody's getting rid of, you know, a little tree or something in their backyard and they'll put it out on the side of the road so that the claw can come down and grab it. Finding wood back in the jungle was never an issue um, anywhere in our backyard. I mean, we had miles and miles, a huge expanse of just virgin jungle. So finding sticks was not a problem, but as the boys and I are wanting to kind of start making more and more of these neck bands, you know, we need some wood for that. And our backyard is not the place because it just leads to the bayou. There's lots of water. And although, you know, we live in a really green area, we have tons of trees around here. All these trees and bushes, you know, basically belong to other people. We can't go around just like hacking branches off. Um, that would cause a problem. So we're kind of in a dilemma in the fact that we can't really find any any good wood. Something that we can cut and dry out. There. That looks like, that looks like a perfect scene shot handle right there. Width wise, it looks just about perfect. I'm just wondering if the wood is not the best quality. It looks pretty, it looks pretty brittle, you know what I mean? Yeah, see that? Wimpy wood. Yeah, no, 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 this is good. It's nice fresh wood. That's the kind of rings that we're looking for, but the rest of that looks too small. All right. It broke off pretty easily. I figured that. No, that's too big. Uh, might be just slightly small. We need something strong, something that kids tend to beat up, you know, and that doesn't break easily. What we're finding is a lot of piles like this. It's all old wood and it's kind of old and rotten, but we wanted something fresh. Well, down here, Mr. house has some woods. I'm sure the great idea 
of coming to our grandparents' house, Stuart's house, to get um, our Wild Brothers neck bands. Because what we're finding on the road is just, it's not gonna cut it. Oh yeah, sure. Um, we we tried like several different piles, none of them are very good. But um, our grandparents have this awesome backyard and there's plenty of woods in it, um, different types of trees, and we'll be able to get a wide selection. And um, they don't mind if we come and get some samples from their backyard. So this is a perfect spot. Um, it's a great idea of Asher's. It's good to be back though. When we first came to the States, we actually lived with our grandparents here at this house for about six months while we were getting our other house um, ready to live in. Man, we have tons of memories in this place, and yeah, it's good to be back. Uh, this is a good old tree. This has tons of memories for us, although every year it seems to sink a little bit lower. It used to be quite a bit taller. But um, yeah, this used to be our platform for our three-story tree house, complete with a fish clock. Um, we actually pulled out the old seats from the Volkswagen and put it up in the third story, and um, we, we used to eat ice cream up here and have fun. But um. It is no more, only in our hearts. It was actually a blessing in disguise because the treehouse had grown so old and it was starting to fall apart itself. And grandma was getting after us and telling us that we needed to take it down because it was kind of an eyesore, it was kind of falling apart. It was also dangerous. So we were gonna just um, demolish it, just kind of break down the foundations, let it fall down. But a big storm came through and actually did the work for us. But uh, it's still doing okay. I think it's dying, but portions of it, the roots are still in the ground and there's still green leaves. So. It's living on, even without the treehouse. Yo, boys. Yeah. I found the perfect piece. I knew it as soon as I laid eyes on it. This was going to be the stitch for me. Um, the only thing is, I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to saw this, because it's kind of at a weird angle here. All right. There she blows. So really, that's probably all we need for right now. So what we'll do is we'll just take it back home, um, cut the pieces that we think are like prime pieces that are the perfect um, diameter, and then we just need to let it sit and dry. One of the interesting things about culture is um, it's like in one place of the world you can have, you know, an acceptable practice and another place something that can be um, not so acceptable or a little different. Um, and here in the States with these neck bands, it's kind of somewhere in between. It's like, obviously a lot of people wear neck necklaces, but you know, our styles is kind of different. It's more like the tribal style and you know, a lot of guys sometimes don't wear necklaces. So it kind of lies somewhere in between. But um, one of the things that we really found out in the tribe when we were growing up is that um, it's best to blend in as much as possible. Um, one of the people that really, at least on the mission field, championed this kind of um, ideology was um, Hudson Taylor. Because back in his day when he was a missionary, most people, um, when they would go to another country, they would look like Westerners, talk like Westerners, you know, eat like Westerners probably. But um, he thought, man, how much cooler would it be for my ministry if I tried to blend in more? I bet I could really. Um, become more of an insider and um, that would open up the door for me to share the gospel in a better way. And so he started kind of going against the grain and he started addressing like the Chinese people and speaking like them and um, just becoming a, as much of a part of the culture as he could. And that really went a long way until finally some people weren't even really able to tell the difference between him and the other Chinese people. As Paul the Apostle modeled, um, we can be all things to all people so we can further the gospel and Hudson Taylor is a great example of that. But you can also go to the uh, extreme of doing that and you can copy too much of the culture and actually sinful parts of the culture. For instance, here in the States, there's a lot of um, cultural aspects of life that are um, contrary to what God's word tells us to do. Um, so there might be pressure, um, you know, peer pressure, you know, pressure from our friends and family to blend in and accept or even personally um, carry some of these cultural um, aspects of life. But at the end of the day, we're followers of Christ and um, we live by a higher standard and that's God's word. And so we need to be making sure that we are different from the world because the Bible makes it very clear that as believers, um, we're supposed to be the light of the world. We're supposed to be different so that the unbelievers know, hey, you know, these guys 
they are different and they do have a message. The Bible talks about uh, as believers, we're supposed to be in the world, but not of it. And um, if we're just like everybody else, then um, what we're telling them to do, you know, about the, um, God's word and, you know, about the gospel, if we're telling them to do these things, but we're not living, living that out in our own lives, then our message won't be very impactful at all, I don't think. So there's a fine balance. We, we want to be um, blending in to cultures so that we can, yes, for the gospel, we don't want to blend in too much so that all of a sudden our kind of message becomes obsolete and we're just like everybody else. How's it coming out, Sam? Perfect. Dude, you're on your urban machete, man. Finished with this one? Time to get on to our new batch. Good. Good. <sighs> We brothers have been through a lot together, and our neck bands remind us of all our adventures. Through thick and thin, we have learned to rely on one another, trusting in God, whether helping bring the gospel to an unreached people group, hiking across uncharted mountain ranges, or swimming off remote islands. We've learned that following Christ is the ultimate adventure, and moving across the globe hasn't changed that. Our past has shaped who we are. We are part of two cultures living somewhere in between. But we only have one purpose, and that is to serve God. Four brothers, two cultures, one way. Thanks for watching The Wild Way, and double thanks if you've already liked or subscribed to our YouTube channel. If you want to get more involved with us, visit our Patreon website. Hit the link below to learn how you can become a member of our Patreon team and partner with us. Also, you'll get awesome benefits, like exclusive vlog videos, like Wild Brothers merchandise, and a lot more.